Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at a beautiful tool called Global Hair. And this is from the folks at Blendify. And this is an amazing tool that allows you create and add hair to your characters easily. And for those who like to get this, you can simply go over to the link in the description that will bring you right here where you'll be able to see all the amazing things that you can do with this and also grab it. This currently comes with 180 presets that deals with various types of hairs that you can literally pick up and work with. Underneath the hood, this uses geometry nodes and offers a lot of customization that you'll be needing, especially if you're thinking about creating realistic hairs for your characters. And with that said, let's dive right into Blender and explore how this actually works. For Blender, simply open up right here. All we need to do to get things going is to go over to Edit, go over to Preference, go over to the Add-on section and install the add-on. Now, once you have the add-on installed, you can click on the bugger menu, save your preference and close the window. And once you do that and tap N on the keyboard, you would notice that we now have a global hair right here within the end panel. So one of the cool things that this offers is varieties of hair types that you can work with from the female, male, stylized, and also beard. And one of the things that a lot of people have actually complained about when it comes to hair tools like this is not having a lot of variation. But that's not the case with this one. For example, within the male hair section, you do have a variety of hair types that you can work with. And this cuts across different ethnicity and different hairstyles, especially the ones that you possibly will be looking for in various other tools. And this includes dreads to simple short hair afro, all the way to punks, different kinds of dreads as well, braids and so on. You do have them right here. And of course, the same thing can also be seen when it has to do with the female hair as well. So within the female section, you do have a lot of variations that also deals with coily hair. Possibly you're looking for some twists, bangs, different kinds of braids and different kinds of hair textures, some coils, all of that currently available right here and so this just gives you a lot of options when it comes to hair and the same thing can also be said for the stylized as the stylized also has a good number of things going for it so again this has a ton of hair types and you can simply just pick them up put them onto your character and start working with them and speaking about the characters that you can put this on you can literally work with any kind of character out there so whether you're thinking about working with Revolution characters, DAS characters, or potentially you like to work with a human base mesh that you can get from blender.org, you can simply go ahead and work with that. In our case, we're going to be using the free human base mesh that you can get from the asset page of blender.org. So for example, if we like to throw in a hair, we can go through any of the ones that we have here. And how this works is as easy as selecting the type of hair that you want. And then you can simply click on add hair. And once we add that, you'll notice it's right here. Let's go ahead and position our character exactly where we want that to be. Right about the point like so. So once you have that, let's get rid of this. So once you have that, you do have yourself the hair right in. So by default, once you take a look at this, you would notice that it's not properly placed. So with the hair selected, if we simply have that selected, go over to the modifier, we can go to the shrink wrap. And from here, we can click on target and make the base mesh our target. And once you do that, it is easy peasy. So for rendering, this is also that easy. So in this case, what we would like to render with would be cycles. So I'm simply going to go ahead and switch this to cycles. Let's make that GPU and potentially do a simple the noise. So once we have this ready, what we need to do to actually get the right hair being rendered within our viewport is to go over to the modifier section, as you would notice that the modifier section for the hair are in two types or are in two tiers. The first one is the global hair, which is like the main mesh that you use to you know move the hair around. And then we also have the other modifiers that exist underneath, which has to do with the hair themselves. So this is the one that actually renders the hair properly. So in this case, because this has been based off geometry node, what we can do is to come through, click right here, and we'll have our hair rendered within our viewport. Now, other than that, you do have this proxy hair, which allows you to actually move the character and the hair around without throttling performance. So for us to see the render, what we need to do is to switch over to our viewport rendering, and this is going to calculate and show us our viewport rendering almost in real time. So once we have this ready, we can actually do a couple of things with this. Say, for example, we would like to make some alterations to the hair. Of course we can. What we can do is to simply dive back and I would suggest that you go over to the modifier and turn this off. So once you do that, you can now click, go over to the sculpt mode, which is the typical hair sculpting mode that exists with Blender. So if you're using a recent version of Blender, you possibly have that. And from here, you can select from any of the brushes that exist and start making modifications. So for example, we might want to change how the hair actually looks on the character. 
or make some transforms. Of course, we can do all of that. So once we have this done, we can go all the way back, turn this back on, and of course we can now render. So another thing that you might also notice is within the shader. So in this case, if you'd like to change how the hair looks, of course you can. You would notice that by default within the shader editor that we've got two different principal hair BSDF. And one of them has to do with the melanin concentration and the other one has to do with the direct coloring. So if you just want to do more like direct coloring of the hair, of course you can simply just use that, color the hair however you want and proceed with that. But on the other hand, if you'd like to control how the melanin concentration on the hair is in certain parts, of course you can also do this. This gives you more flexibility on controlling the hair shading and how you like certain parts to be darker, brighter and so on. Additionally, within that principal BSDF that contains the melanin concentration, you also have the tint. And with the tint, you can do more stuff. So for example, if you like to tint it green, blue, or maybe you just want to tint it red, you can do all of that. After all, this actually works. And you might want to explore other hair that exists with this and see some potential cool stuff that you can do. So with the other hairs that you find here, from the stylized to the beards, which we didn't even talk about, that has a good number of beard types that you can work with, you can bring this in, add them into your character and start building of these. This just gives you that flexibility that you're looking for when you're thinking about making hair. If you like to make alterations to the hair in geometry nodes, you still have options for that. So for this one, if we would like to make some changes, you can literally go into geometry nodes and start making those changes. We can drop the density of the hair if we like that to be a bit reduced, and we can increase that density if we also want that as well. There's also a mask. So in case you're thinking about painting mask, you can of course go ahead and do that. You can use this black and white mask to control where hair gets to be placed. Within the viewport amount, we can also drop the viewport amount and increase it at will. So the whole idea behind this particular section of the geometry nodes is to give you that flexibility and proceduralism that you need to actually get things done faster without sacrificing performance. One other thing which you will notice within the main geometry node is the seeding. So you can seed this however you want and also create some interesting results overall. So this is it, this amazing hair tool is now available with tons of presets and of course tons of controls that you can use to create hair easily and quickly inside of Blender. This gives you all of that flexibility and with a lot of variations that just offers you all of what you'll be needing for your next character hair. Currently, this is having a launch discount and for those who like to take a look at this, you can simply go over to the link in the description where you can grab it. More so, there is a lot of other add-ons that are also offering discounts and of course some other add-ons that you can work alongside with this, which I'm going to link in the description that can get you going. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.